It is a very good evening and welcome to everybody here. I know there's plenty of excitement in the room. We don't want to take up too much of your time. It is a night to come together and celebrate, but we wanted to welcome you all here to the 2023 Sherelle McMahon Medal. My name's Pete Laser. A pleasure to be a co-host this year of this magnificent event because we have called in one of the big guns from Fox Netball, one of the big guns from Netball everywhere. One of the big, I have, what else did you write about yourself? One of the games. <laughs> Greatest legends of all time. A big round of applause for my co-host tonight, Bianca Chatfield. Uh, thank you, everyone. It's great to be here. Thanks, Pete, for sharing the stage, although you've really made sure I've only got a few lines that I'm allowed to say, but that's OK. Yep. I never stick to scripts, so watch out. Anything could happen. <laughs> now, before we do get started, it's great to be here, but we'd like to acknowledge uh, the Bunurong people as the traditional owners and custodians of the land here at Albert Park and pay our respects to the elders, past and present, and extend and the acknowledgement to any Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people here today. I also wish to recognise the tremendous contribution First Nations people make to this sport, and in particular, right here in Victoria, and highlight the power of netball to promote reconciliation, enhance belonging, and reduce inequality. It is fantastic to have you all here this evening. We very much look forward to a wonderful night of celebration to celebrate everything from the 2023 Suncorp Super Netball season. We do have some special guests that are joining us here this evening. Netball Victoria President Carol Cathcart and our fellow board directors. Netball Victoria Chief Executive Officer Andrea Pierman and other general managers. To the Australian Netball Champion, Melbourne Vixens legend. It sounds like I'm talking about you, but I'm not. I'm talking about your very good friend because <laughs> it is the namesake of this very prestigious award Welcome to Sherelle McMahon. She, does. she doesn't meet. Yes, she does. She's got her own statue now, Pete. She needs all the She applause. has her own statue, she has her own medal. She doesn't need her own round of applause. But <laughs> to Melbourne Vixens head coach, Simone McInnes, OAM. Don't have an OAM yet, Chaz. Melbourne. <laughs> Melbourne Vixens patron, Joyce Brown, OAM. Uh, representing the Victorian Government, Head of the Office for Women in Sport, Sarah Stiles. Executive Director, Sports Economy, Luke Mason. And Director of State Sports Entities, Belinda Clevelan. Welcome to you all. Also, to our valued partners that are in the room, we have our new principal partner, WorkSafe, and plenty of our wonderful partners and friends in the room. Thank you for your support throughout the course of this season. May there be many more years of your support going forward. To our wonderful members, and supporters of this team that are in the room tonight. You've been with us for many, many years and now you're in the room tonight. Trust you enjoy yourselves. It is a great night of celebration. But of course, a very special welcome to our guests of honour, the 2023 Melbourne Vixens team, squad members, coaches, support staff and their families. How about a big round of applause for our <laughs> guests of honour. So great to have you all tonight. Now, please, uh, we want to also welcome everyone watching from home. Give a wave to the cameras. We are going live on the Melbourne Vixens Facebook and YouTube channels as well. Shani Norda, please keep your hands down. Please behave yourselves. Why is she in front of the camera? Yeah. I am not sure how Shani is front and centre of the camera. Caitlin Thwaites, please keep her under control. Thwaites is good, but she's not that good. <laughs> we have a jam-packed evening of awards to give out tonight. But before we get into them, Pete, I think it's been a huge season and there's been so many highlights. You're at every home game. 
Has there been a standout for you this season? Oh, I think back to back after the after the whistle wins, that's that's a pretty good start to any any season. So I like the, I like those. I also like the fact that we can just barrack for a side that goes out there and gives everything every week. I absolutely love it. And you're right, I haven't missed a home game since I don't know 1908 or whenever we started. <laughs> it seems like a very long time. And that's but you keep turning up. You keep turning up for a reason. And you've got these amazing athletes that are representing you, representing their families and. It's been absolutely fantastic. So I think the pride of which you, you get to watch and which you get to, to celebrate, I think that was certainly a highlight this year in a challenging year because it's, I mean, it's challenging every year. And we saw that yesterday. We saw it last night in an amazing grand final. What about you, B, in your role as being in charge of Fox Sports and Fox Netball? What was being... Well, you told me to say that as well. I'm not in charge. Okay, so I wonder. At okay, all. so I'm watching. <laughs> what, what have you seen? What, from a, a Vixens... Put your Vixens... Scarf back on, Vixens dress back on, you're a premiership player, captain and everything there. What, what did you see that you loved out of the Vixens this year? Well, really early on, uh, I find it really hard when I'm calling the Vixens games because I get quite emotional watching and when I'm talking about it and I can't look at you half the time after a game, especially if it is a big win or a really close win. Um, but round two, I think it was, when you played the Magpies and that very end and the dramatic moment with that centre pass and, but it was not so much what happened in that moment, great, we got the win, but it was how you handled it that made me really proud of this club. It was just, there was nothing going on, on outside, it was just get on with it, this is what's happened and we move on. I love that. I loved Kira Austin's buzzer beaters, I mean they were awesome to be a part of and to see happen. I loved also the moment, where is she, Kate Eddy. I've got to talk about defenders here because Kate Eddy, when you came on against the Thunderbirds at goal defence, you run on straight away, you reject Georgie Horges at goal attack. And I don't think I've seen a better moment out there on court because nothing beats a rejection. Isn't that right, Sherelle? Give her a round of applause. Well done, Kate Eddy. That's good, though. It didn't take you too long to get into the defenders ruling the game. That's fantastic. So let's talk about tonight because we are recognising individual brilliance and those that make a difference to the Melbourne Vixens both on and off the court. But you've seen a lot of netball. You've seen how well we've played. Unfortunately, we didn't have the year that we wanted. However, tonight we will crown a Sherelle McMahon medalist. Who do you think it'll be? Ooh, that actually is a really tough question because I think at different times uh, players have really came out to play and there have been phenomenal performances. You know, you can't go past what the midcourt do, Kate Maloney, Liz Watson, but especially down the defence end, Emily Mannix and Liv Lewis at goalkeeper, Joe Weston out the front. And of course, Kwenda and then Kira Austin and Hannah Mundy when she's come on as well. Like, can I say everybody? So out of the 10 players... <laughs> They can all win it, is what you've narrowed it down to. Yes, that's exactly what I think. Well, these insights brought to you by the Fox Commentary <laughs> um, It is great to have you here, and we could and probably would, if we were allowed to, waffle on for the remainder of the evening. However... It's not about us, Pete. It's not, which is very surprising also. We have got lots to get through. We look forward to a huge night. So thank you so much for joining us. And we've got a, a special guest who's going to come and join us. We sure do. All right, so as we said, put us to the side... One person I'm sure you all want to hear from is the head coach of the Melbourne Vixens, Simone McInnes. Look at the concentration, just getting up the stairs, not falling over. I, I thought I'd try and shield you from the hard-hitting Fox commentary, Simone, because it's, it's been a big season. Obviously, we are in the win-loss business, so we look at a year, we don't win it. It's not the season that we wanted to have, and yet there are many positives that we can take out of 2023. How did you see the season from a head coaching point of view? Uh, look, to be honest, it's still pretty raw. You know, two weeks ago today... Not that I'm counting hours or days, but we were <laughs> sitting at change room over in Perth again for the second year in a row, not having finished the season in our own terms. So I know what it, you know that disappointment, that heartbreak, that devastation to sit in a room with each other, having given everything you have all season, and to work and to fight for a premiership. That's what we're all about. But to sit in that room and knowing that your season's ending, it's just like that. It's over. 
it hurts and it takes a little while to get over that. It takes a while to lick the wounds and to, to heal, to have to watch the past couple of weeks and not be a part of it. It is, it, it's shattering. But the important part is I'm super proud of the girls. They gave everything week in, week out. We go into each season for the best and wanting the best for each other and, and demanding and challenging for the best each season. Um, and, you know, it's disappointing to finish the way that, that we were, but I'm super proud and I, I think that we're capable and that it's ahead for us and, um, and that's what we've got to focus on from here. There aren't enough notebooks in the, the universe for you to fill with things that you want to take out of this season and improve on for, for next year. So how do you make sure that you filter down and drill down to the, the, the things that we need to take out of this year, improve upon for next year, knowing that... It's going to look different next year. There's going to be a, an eighth franchise that comes in that we don't know anything about at the moment. Look, I, I think taking from this season, I think it's um, probably the piece that was missing for us this season, but that consistency, that week in, week out, performing at the highest level. Um, we built on that depth and flat, that flexibility across, across the, the court, but um, that ability to adapt and adjust... Um, and take on any situation and any circumstance. But I think we've seen across the past couple of weeks the importance and the impact of the super shot as well. And that's got to become a, a strength of ours as well. And I'm not talking about shooting. We had some amazing games where we've won games with super shots. But that ability, that defence and attack is like 20 minutes of a game out there. So that's got to become a strength of ours as well. But there is so many unknowns ahead. There's a new team to come in. Um, contracting and everything is still ahead for us um, but there's also exciting times with the World Cup um, with Fury playing as well so you know we look forward and we plan and the process of becoming better and becoming who we want to be out there on court for next season starts now. So we look towards 2024 away from netball hopefully you're not going surfing but what will you do to get <laughs> Di asked me to say that what what will you do with your time away? How much time do you take for yourself? How much time do you take to, to re-energise? Because I know that once you're back into it, you are back into it. So what, what do you do to make sure that you, you can recharge the batteries? Oh, look, it's a re really important process at the moment to go through and review the season that was and, and to analyse the season that was and to plan for the season ahead. And that's a really important part of this next week, this month and so forth. But it is really important too that everybody has a great break. Um, enjoy your break, everybody. <laughs> that sounds like 30-minute quarters are coming back. <laughs> because it, it's, it does. The season super netball gets bigger, stronger, tougher, more demanding each year. So, you know, that's what about is preparing to be the best team out there in the competition. We all prepare, each of us step and are ready and believe that we can win a premiership and that's what we're about. And that's what we prepare for from here. But it is important to have a break. I'll have a break. I'll get a couple of screws taken out of my foot in the off-season, like some of the players do, um, and come back ready to go again. So we have, just to, to sum it up, we've got some wonderful partners and friends and family and obviously our wonderful players in the room as well, support staff. We've got many wonderful supporters who are watching from home as well. What would be the overriding message that you would like to portray from the, the senior head coach point of view of the Melbourne Vixens to our wonderful fan base and our friends and family in the room tonight? It is in our reach. It is in our reach and it's so exciting. Uh, and we learn a great deal this year and we can't wait to be back out there. We love, I mean, it was so exciting this year, the games that we had at John Kane Arena, the fans, the supporters, it was brilliant. Um, the ability to do that interstate and at different times, that's ahead for us and we will do it. Our, our objective is to be premiers. We want everybody to be a part and we have so many people that work for us and support us. It's not just the people in the change room, week in, week out, or a couple of weeks ago. Those of us in the change, it's not just about them. You know, I, you know, and I want to acknowledge you know, Netball Victoria and board and staff who work really hard for us. And I do need to acknowledge to Steve Gatt. Where are you, Steve? He used to be on this table. He's right down the end now. It doesn't take long, does it, Steve? He's, he's lucky to be on that table, it must be said. He was serving drinks about an hour ago. But, you know, Steve really exemplifies the people that, 
about Netball Victoria and the people that we're fortunate as vixens to have around us. You know, the VIS, we have you know, amazing support from the VIS and I do want to acknowledge Bill, who has been just... <laughs> Bill Tate, a great wise head around our program and we have, we could probably technically can't claim you as a training partner over the years, Phil. Um, just that, that support and being there whatever role that we've needed across the time. You know, my Vixen staff, I have an amazing... or oh, the girls, and we have an amazing staff around us that work hard for us, that give everything that they've got. It's not just the people out in court, that they give everything that they have week in, week out, so that we can get out and do what we do. And I do have to say, acknowledge, die, honey, 150 games this year. <laughs> <laughs> sitting beside me, but, you know, the quality people that work, you know, for us week in, week out so that we can do what we do. And it is the family and it is the friends, it is the members, it is supporters. We do, while we, you know, we step out there for ourselves and for the club, it is for our members, it is for our supporters, it is for the people that work really hard for us around and that's so important for us and that does drive us. And that disappointment from this year and sitting and having to watch last night and last... It does drive us to be better from here and we will. I do really want to say a big thank you and acknowledgement to our training partners. I don't think people... <laughs> I don't think people understand how much training partners put in for the Vixens. You know, Gabby, Emily, Shani, Maggie, where are you? and Ruby, um, that put in week in, week out from the start of the season right to the very end. They're there for us. They don't, they're not necessarily their game day. They're not necessarily in the change rooms, but they give everything of themselves for us week in, week out, um, and we're better for it. And I really thank you guys for that as well. So thank you. Well done. Can we have a big round of applause also for Simone McInnes, OAM. <laughs> Stick around, Simone, if you can, please. Presentation time. Just as you mentioned, Simone, the training partners, they are such an integral part of the team. So we would love to have you all come up on stage and get a small gift from Simone. So to start with, Ruby Barkmeyer, are you able to come up, Rubes? No, we'll bring it to you, Rubes, if you like. Emily Andrew, Maggie Karras, Shani Lambden, and Gabby Coffey. So just for those, for those unaware, Ruby's down here in a moon boot with crutches, so we're not going to make her come up here just for the minute, but depending who gets the bottle of champagne, you might be a chance to get it delivered to you. So congratulations. Um, and before we let Simone and Gabby go back to their seats, Gabby Coffey made her debut way back in round one. Yeah. Melbourne Vixens Club number 61. Gabby, congratulations. <laughs> And I love that glint in Gabby's eye when she thought she was getting a second bottle of Moe, but that's, <laughs> that's a first say congratulations. Once you're part of our wonderful club, you're there forever. So thank you so much. Big round of applause, including Ruby down here for our wonderful <laughs> squad members. Right. Please, as well, that'd be fantastic. Simone, Simone will stay, stay on stage. Stay, stay. You forget your instructions so quickly, Simone. All right, Simone, we want you to stay up here because it's time for the first award of the night. And I know that within this club, this award is extremely prestigious. A lot hangs on this award um, because it is the coach's award. And we know it's all about the players that go their hardest to impress the coaches. Look at these two. Kate Maloney and Emily Mannix are punching on. <laughs> this is unbelievable. I can feel the anticipation, can't yeah, you? Yeah, absolutely. This is unbelievable. This is the one that everybody is waiting for. Sorry, Sherelle McMahon, we'll get to yours later. <laughs> the winner of the 2023 Coaches Award and taking home a $250 prize from WorkSafe is Kate Eddy. <laughs> My 
goodness. So, Kay Eddie's, you know what? I meant to do this chat, but now a defender's won it. I think we should pass this microphone over to B. And here we go. Thank you, Sorry. thank you, Pete. Congratulations, Kate. Firstly, I want to know how you're feeling. Oh, over the moon. <laughs> Pretty excited. Looking over there, they're a bit jealous over there. Who, who, do, you, who do you think? Who was your main competition tonight? Oh, Emily. Emily's won it a fair few times. <laughs> <laughs> Emily is crying. That is actually tears of happiness for her mate. I'm sure. Okay, on a more serious note, the coach's award goes to somebody who it's about the effort, it's about how hard you work, how hard you train, what you add to the team. What is your favourite thing about this club? Well, I think the people, like as Simone said before, there's not anyone at the club, staff, players or anyone, fans, members, family members, everyone's such an amazing person and makes you a better person and I just love work, going to work every single day, learning and yeah, working really hard. And for you, what moments from this season really stand out? Uh, I think this year we really connected well as a team of 10, you know, with our rotations on and off the court. I feel like this year we really used all 10 players and I think that was really influential to how successful we were to try and make finals. Um, so, yeah, I feel like just... I'm just so proud and grateful to be part of this club and, yeah, I love the business. Oh, that is beautiful. <laughs> well, we all love you. Everybody, please put your hands together for Kate Eddy. Thanks, Simone. Your work is done. You've done your big round of applause, please, Simone McInnes. Oh, I am our head coach, of course. Oh, there's tears for the winner. There's tears from people who don't win. This is what an emotional start it has been. We need to move on to our next award, and we didn't want to keep her off stage for too long because probably expected to come up. So, to present the Outstanding Service Award and to assist with our presentation, please welcome up one of our co-captains and runner-up in the Coaches Award, Kate Maloney. Hey. Equal runner-up. I'm trying to make Kate feel good, and then Emily Mannix has just yelled at me saying, equal, I was equal, OK. <laughs> equal runners-up in the Coaches Award. The Outstanding Service Award. This award is voted on by team staff and athletes and awarded to someone who has significantly contributed to the development of the team, provided great support to our athletes and staff across the year and represents the team in line with the Vixens' values. This year's winners, because it's a tie. Good response. <laughs> we'll be taking home a $250 prize from our very good friends at RACV. The winners of our Outstanding Service Award are Kim Gray and Emma Igaboo. <laughs> Okay, Emma, I'm going to start off with you. Team physiotherapist, I would like to know from you, what is it like watching the game, especially as we know how physical it is? Do you sit there really nervous about what could happen? And how do you react in those moments where you have to run out onto court? Yeah, I hate running out on court. Um, yeah, no, do you want me to hold them? Uh, so, <laughs> um, to be honest, I actually don't watch the game at all. I normally watch the, the contacts and the lands and so forth. So Mona always asks me after the, the game kind of what I thought, and I, I've actually got no idea. I can tell you about how they landed and who got a hit to the head and whatnot, but that's about it. So, yeah. And when you are working with the players, are there some players that are particularly challenging or don't do what you say? <laughs> Oh. Especially that rehab stuff, you know, that you tell them all they should be doing? No, they're all really good. <laughs> I feel like all the girls want to dob each other in. For one chance. No, we're, all the players are so good. They, they do. <laughs> all right, well played. I'm going to come over here. Okay, great. Kim, you work in a wellbeing role with the players. 
and talk to me about that role and how important it is, because it's something that hasn't been a role that's been around for a long time. How important is it, do you think, to have it within a club? Yeah, that's right. It hasn't been around for a long time in the network, in the industry in general. Um, I think it's really important. All the girls have got lives outside of netball, so it's just helping them work out how to juggle it, you know, and keep those, whether it's dual careers or whether it's just life that gets in the road. So, yeah, it's important for them to have someone that they can kind of come to and, you know, can pick up some of the other stuff off the court. What do you enjoy most about being involved with this club? Oh, I love it. There's lots of lols. <laughs> I wouldn't mind a bit more height, but um, but look, I, I just love it. I just love being around um, the players and staff and families and friends and just everyone else involved as well. It's um, it's a huge privilege to be involved with this club as well. Well, congratulations to both of you, Kim and Emma, on your awards tonight. Very well spoken from Kim and Emma, and funnily enough. Just a little moment that you mentioned about how it is sometimes the juggle brings us to our next award. And of course, I'm just filling in time until every player mentions how great it is that you've won that award and you make your way back to your set. Here we go. Well, you've won. You can celebrate as long as you like, but we do have more awards to get to. And we just heard, quite rightly, how it is a balance. There are lives and events that happen away from the netball court. Next up, is our Excellence in Life and Excellence in Sport and Life Award. To assist with this presentation, he's already on her way. A big round of applause for our assistant coach, Di Honey. This award is presented to a player deemed to have demonstrated exceptional skills in balancing their commitments and achieving high standards as determined by the Vixens management team, coaching staff and support staff. The winner of the 2023 Excellence in Sport and Life Award and taking home a $250 prize from Deakin University is Kira Austin. <laughs> All right, well, we've got a suit in our B, so you can just rest. You're too biased here. This is fantastic. We've had some surprise. Kate couldn't believe that she won. Emma couldn't believe it. And all of a sudden, Kira's just looked around like, how did I win that? <laughs> Come over, Kira, because you won it. It is the excellence in sport and life. We know you're excellent at sport. We see you every week. But you do myriad things away from the netball court as well. Can you just take us... Into a, into a week. What are some of the things that you are doing at the moment? Work, study, life. Talk us through why you think that maybe you've been recognised here this evening in this way. Um, well, at the moment, I'm finished uni, so not Woo. much. <laughs> um, but, yeah, the, this was my last semester, the, year that, or the first part of the year that just went, and, yeah, just finished my medical science degree. <laughs> medical science. That's worth a round of applause in itself. But aside from that, you, there's so many balls that you try and keep up in the air. And even just to get away from netball, to get out of the, the bubble of day-to-day -day training, what are some of the things that you do? Because obviously being recognised in this way, it's a, it's a fantastic recognition for everything that you do. Yeah, look, I think um, I like kind of having a really full plate and having lots of things to do. Um, I love netball, but I also love having a life away <laughs> from netball. Um, I think being down in Victoria, um, the one thing I've noticed is how sporty it is down here and how much... Um, young kids really do love their sport, so um, yeah, I love getting around and coaching the young girls as well. And yeah, I don't know what else to say. Sorry. <laughs> we need, we, maybe we need some. Well, you're getting nervous. Don't be nervous. <laughs> that just means you're going to get more questions. It's going to go for a very long time. But to get recognised in this way amongst your peers, with people who are here, knowing how much you do, knowing what you contribute, because there's always people looking from the outside who don't know what you do and how you do it. What does that mean to you? Because this is voted on by your peers and they recognise what you do. What does that mean that your teammates and friends have, have thought of you in this way? Yeah, I mean, it's very special. Um, you kind of just turn up to training every day and you just go about your business. But, yeah, you always check in on each other and you hear about the little things that everyone's doing away from the court and you always feel inspired about what everyone's doing. But, um, yeah, props to Kim Gray. She's been instrumental in helping me finish this semester. Um, and already talking to her about what else I can do next semester. I don't know how to stop studying. <laughs> um, maybe Hannah can take a leaf out of my book. <laughs> there it is. I knew if we just kept asking questions, we'd get there. 
Oh, we don't need the story. We just wanted the headline. That was... You know, we talk about apples not falling far from the tree. Great to have Shelley here too. Um, your... Kerry, your, your hair's looking sensational tonight. Did you go back to Joe Weston's hairdresser for this? No, I didn't go back there, actually. But I will go back. Joe won't go back. Oh, my goodness. This is... This is unbelievable. Very nervous. So, is there anyone else you can pop whilst you're up here? There's still a few players that are down here. <laughs> What does it mean, though, to be part of this, this Vixens lineup? We know that you, you've come down, you came off a, a serious injury, and you've really, really worked hard to, to get back. You've got a World Cup coming up as well. How are you, how are you feeling, even away from that, the netball court? How are you feeling in your, in your life, knowing that you are trying to fill in a thousand things? Yeah, um, I'm obviously very fortunate to be able to do what I do day in and day out. I've got a lot of exciting things coming up, but I think I've been playing some of my best netball down here, and I still kind of pinch myself every day that I had the opportunity to come down here to play for the Melbourne Vixens, to play for all the members and the fans, all the staff that support us, and of course for all the girls that are here today. So I'm very fortunate. Excellence in sport and life. Our winner, Kira Austin. <laughs> our last award before we get into the vote count for the season is the Melbourne Vixens Volunteer of the Year Award. And to assist in the presentation, we'd like to welcome Emily Mannix to the stage. As we all know, we are... We are very much enjoying the energy that's in the room, the support for all of our winners. However, we know the integral part that our magnificent volunteers play in our game day experience every week. Before we announce the winner of the award, can we just say a huge thank you to our magnificent volunteers who have assisted throughout the season. They are just legends. We love them. I've seen a few of the very familiar faces throughout the room tonight. Hopefully, as many of our volunteers that could make it here tonight are here, so a huge thank you to you. However, there can only be one who is crowned the Volunteer of the Year. And the winner of the Melbourne Vixens Volunteer of the Year Award and taking home a $250 prize with thanks to BMD is Remy Parker. <laughs> In case you are wondering, in case you are wondering, a lot more coordinated on match day. I'm getting on the way. Don't run. Don't run. You, you take your shoes off. Yes. <laughs> Here I was thinking we we're going to hand over a Sabco mop, but no, we've got. Maybe we're looking for a shoe sponsor. Huma, where are you? <laughs> I'll hold this. For you. Remy, stay here. Oh, that's. Beautiful. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> so you had no idea you were coming no, here tonight well, I knew I was to win an award. I didn't know about the award. That's the surprising part. I didn't know about the award. Now, you've been in and around the club for a few years. Can you take us through all the different roles that you've had? So I've been, for the last... Two years I've been on the side with my ball and mop squad. <laughs> <laughs> and I was also from about 2017 to about 2020, 2019, I was the mascot minder, so <laughs> back of house. And yeah, been on court ever since. And I just like to thank the Melbourne Vixens for this opportunity. Um, but yeah, thank you, girls. What, what is it that you love about this club? Just the atmosphere on game days. Love the atmosphere. Love what the girls do. What they bring out on court. Yeah. And what about our sport? What do you love so much about netball? Uh, I've been playing it since I was a little girl and I've just grown up playing, like, being here, being through netball and everything. What position? Are we a defender, a, a shooter, a mid-quarter? I'm a defender. Yeah. But, but I'm happy.
have to break the heart. I oh. was a shooter when I was little. That's right. We've all we've all so, had a go down that end. So I went shooter <laughs> to defence, and then I was a bit of a mid quarter when I played. <laughs> I, this, is I like, only, this is Bianca tipping a winner. This is this is <laughs> I only played wing attack for a game because I had. My, I was playing mixed netball with my family. Shout out to my family if you're watching. <laughs> if not, I, I'll be disappointed. But um, I played I played netball with my brother and sister. Loved them to bits. Loved playing with them and against them. I did get a bit of elbows from them if I played against them in the back. But don't don't want to put that out there. But yeah. <laughs> and yeah, just love playing netball. I've been playing it since I was little, so, yeah. Well, big congratulations, everyone. Please put your hands together for our Volunteer of the Year, Remy Parker. <laughs> Go and get a photo, you two. Well, there's going to be another TikTok thing recorded this afternoon. <laughs> Ball and Mop Squad, they will have the cleanest table ever down there. <laughs> They will not have a spot on that table underneath. That will be absolutely sensational. But a huge thanks, as we said, huge thanks to all of our wonderful volunteers. We don't have a match day. We don't have a great club without them. So well done to Remy. You are just representing what is a wonderful group of people who get involved each and every day. Congratulations to all of our award winners so far this evening. It brings us to the time of the night where we turn our eyes to the vote count from the Suncorp Super Netball matches throughout the 2023 season. OK, the voting system is after every home and away match throughout the season, our two coaches and our high performance manager award a 3-2-1 vote to the players they consider to be the best on the court. That means there is a total of 18 votes available each round. The votes are then tallied at the end of the season and the athlete who, with the most votes, is named the Sherelle McMahon medalist. A runner-up prize will also be awarded for the athlete receiving the second highest number of votes. Now, in the event of a tie, two or more athletes will be recognised as joint winners. We well, welcome up Netball Victoria President Carol Cathcart, who will have the honour of reading the votes for the first four matches. But before you do, let's take a look at some of the highlights from rounds one through to four. Round one saw us head to Perth to open the season with a grand final rematch against the West Coast Fever. We were looking for redemption, but faced the reigning champions without Joe Weston. A strong performance from Liv Lewis and Emily Mannix to combat Janelle Fowler. Lewis, how's the hops coming from the and a workhorse effort from Liz Watson and Kate Maloney through the middle kept us in touch despite a slow start. Gabby Coffey made her debut in the latter stages, becoming vixen number 61. And a nail-biting finish saw Fever claim the narrowest of wins, 62 goals to 61. We returned home for the first Victorian derby of the year in round two. The Vixens are on the scoreboard. It was a fiercely physical battle. In the first, as you see... Kate Eddy and Joe Weston's relentless work rate and hands over pressure keeping us in it. She goes. Hannah Mundy had a profound impact when she came on. Her strong drives and quick hands racking up 24 feeds in the second half. Three super shots from MJ Kumwinda delivered a stunning comeback. Her fourth two-pointer sunk after the final whistle from a penalty resulted in a remarkable one-goal win, albeit marred by the unfortunate controversy that emerged post-game. In round three, we came up against the Giants in our first home game of the year at John Kane Arena. We took an early lead off the back of some strong defensive work from M Mannix, Joe Weston and Kate Eddy. Kira Austin was on fire, converting those turnovers with accuracy and claiming intercepts and deflections of her own. The Giants drew level with a quarter to play and took a narrow lead. But the composed heads of Liz Watson and Kate Maloney through the midcourt and our signature full-court defensive pressure proved too much for the Giants and we claimed a five-goal win. We faced the Lightning at home in round four in a battle to cement a top four position and it proved to be a tight contest from start to finish. Hannah Mundy got the start in wing attack and made the most of her opportunity early, 
hitting circle edge and finding her goalers with ease. Jo Weston was everywhere in defence with three intercepts and five deflections to her name. Weston comes through. She is up and about. And Kate Eddy came on after half time with immediate impact. M Mannix kept the Lightning goalers contained in the final term and we claimed a four goal win despite some late super shots from the visitors. Round one, Kate Maloney, one vote. Liz Watson, three votes. Olivia Lewis, five votes. Emily Mannix, nine votes. <laughs> Round two, Hannah Mundy, one vote. Liz Watson, one vote. Kate Maloney, three votes. Joe Weston, Four votes. Maui Kawinda, nine votes. <laughs> Round three. Joe Weston, one vote. Kira Austin, two votes. Maui Kawinda, two votes. Emily Mannix, five votes. Liz Watson, eight votes. <laughs> Round four. Kate Eddy, two votes. Liz Watson, two votes. Maui Kamwenda, three votes. Joe Weston, five votes. Kira Austin, six votes. Thank you. It was a good start to the season with some strong performances from Emily, MJ, Kira in particular. Let's move on to rounds five to eight. While we have a look at the highlights package, please welcome the Netball Victoria CEO, Andrea Pierman, to the stage. Hello. Round five was one to forget in Adelaide. Despite flying out of the blocks in Kira Austin's 50th game, the Thunderbirds came out with renewed intent after quarter time. Intense defensive work forced turnovers in our attack end. Our midcourt working hard to combat the suffocating pressure in an increasingly physical clash. Hannah Mundy had an impact, racking up six feeds, an intercept and a deflection in the final term. While we ate into the margin off the back of some close marking in defence from Kate Eddy and Joe Weston, the hosts pulled away and we left ourselves too much to do, going down by 11 goals, 61 to 50. Round six saw us on the road again, this time heading to Sydney to take on the New South Wales Swifts. For Watson. Oh. It was a seesawing affair, with the intensity and physicality of a final. Liv Lewis got the start on Romelda Aiken George and rewarded her coach with three intercepts and six deflections. Oh, Liv, oh, a, she was about 10 forwards off the ground. Liz Watson delivered 38 feeds and 28 goal assists connecting beautifully with MJ Kumwenda under the post, who dominated the scoreboard with 48 from 52 attempts. Scores were all tied at half time, but for a strong third term, put us six goals ahead with 15 minutes to play. Two seconds on the clock. The Swifts converted their chances in the last, taking the win by a single goal in the dying seconds. We were back on the winners list in round seven, facing the Queensland Firebirds on our home turf. In Kate Eddy's absence, a shuffle in the defence saw Joe Weston in wing defence, M Mannix in goal defence and Liv Lewis in goalkeeper. And there's the moment that Liv Lewis has been looking for. A rocky first half saw the visitors in front by five at the main break. But a stunning turnaround saw us register a remarkable 45-goal second half to claim a 12-goal win. Liz Watson was monumental. 49 feeds and 33 goal assists to her name. Kira Austin delivered an intercept and a deflection, and Joe Weston's dogged defensive efforts resulted in a couple of intercepts and an effective shutdown job in the Firebirds' attack end. In the inaugural Super Netball inclusion round and Kate Maloney's 150th National League game, we faced West Coast fever at home. It was goal for goal early. A bit of Kate Eddy magic giving us a narrow lead. Let's go. 
Kira Austin was in everything. Making life difficult on Fever's attacking transverse line with two intercepts and four deflections to her name. Liv Lewis went toe to toe with Janelle Fowler and again used her hops to force turnover ball. The visitors relied on super shots from Sasha Glasgow to stay in touch and reclaim the lead early in the third term. MJ Kumwinda once again starred, her composure and shooting volume giving us every chance, and Austin sank a super shot after the buzzer to give us a nail biting one goal win. Round five, Emily Mannix, one vote. Liz Watson, one vote. Joe Weston, two votes. Maui Kamwenda, three votes. Kate Maloney, three votes. Kate Eddy, eight votes. <laughs> Round six, Kate Eddy, one vote. Kate Maloney, one vote. Maui Kamwenda, four votes. Liz Watson, four votes. Olivia Lewis, Eight votes. <laughs> Round seven, Hannah Mundy, one vote. Joe Weston, five votes. Olivia Lewis, six votes. Liz Watson, six votes. Round eight, Kate Eddy, four votes. Liz Watson, five votes. Kira Austin, nine votes. Thank you so much, Andrea. That's fantastic. Brings us to the end of round eight, just over halfway through the season. So before we go any further, let's bring up the leaderboard as it stands after round eight. Hannah Money with two, Maloney with eight, and Mannix and KD with 15. Joe West and Kiros with 17, with Lewis with 19, MJ with 21. But our leader after round eight is Liz Watson with 30 votes. A nine vote lead, B, it's fair to say, but that's only one round. It can all happen pretty quickly. What are your thoughts, how it stands after round eight? Uh, well, I think anything can happen from here, Pete, to be honest. And we know there are some great performances coming up. What are you all laughing at? <laughs> <laughs> great performances coming up. I was going to mention the two defenders as well. That's a of course. And so I think that even though the superstar Lizzie Watson is leading right now, I think let's watch out for this second half. And we are going to take a break right now for our main course to be served. And so the live broadcast will come back at 9.15pm on the dot. So make sure you go, if you're watching at home, refill your glasses, get something to eat. We will be back very shortly to crown our 2023 Sherelle McMahon medalist. Meet Colin Jenkins, netball coach, orange cutter, Artistic director, planner, chauffeur, sherpa, and sideline hero. As proud partners of Netball Australia, we want to thank Colin for going above and beyond each week to support the netball community. HCF and Netball Australia, united by uncommon care.
Are you ready for a career in sport? To make your mark on the industry? To study at the world's number one school for sports science. Then what are you waiting for? Good evening, everyone. If everyone could please find their seats as we do have the second half of our awards to get through, including the Sherelle McMahon medal. As exciting as the night has been, Shani, that includes you, Joe, if you can find a seat. Everyone at home is very much looking forward to what's going to happen in our second half. E Mannix, find a seat. Kim, calm down. We can see, we can see everything. If everyone could please find their seats as we do need to move on with our second half here. Everybody, it is time for the second half of our evening. I trust that you've enjoyed your main course. We have announced quite a few award winners already, but we do have the Sherelle McMahon Medal, as well as our runner-up and a few other awards and milestones to recognise here this evening. So thank you very much for your attention for the second half. Before we continue with our vote counts, to deliver the President's address, it's my pleasure to welcome to the stage President of Netball Victoria, Carol Cathcart. Thanks, Pete, and welcome everyone here tonight. On behalf of the Board, it is my great pleasure to recognise the contribution of all who have played a part with the Melbourne Vixens this year. Congratulations to Simone, Kate, Liz, the players and support staff for your efforts this season. Thank you to our fantastic partners. We could not provide the exceptional support to our team or spectacle for our fans without your contribution. WorkSafe, principal partner of Netball Victoria and the Melbourne Vixens. HCF, premier partner. Deakin University, McCafe, Puma, Victorian Institute of Sport, BMD, Sixth, Toyota, Gilbert and City of Melbourne. Also thanks to the State Government for their continued and ongoing support of netball. We appreciate the time, effort and energy provided by Simone, Di and the specialist coaches who worked tirelessly to prepare the team through the ups and downs of the season, as well as the support staff who ensure the players are prepared to perform. Thank you to our captains, Liz and Kate, and the players for your commitment and dedication to the Melbourne Vixens. You're an inspiration to so many, from our newest participants and fans to those, who are, those of us who have a lifelong love of netball. We also recognise the enormous contribution of your families and partners who support you throughout the journey. Thanks to our CEO, Andrea, the Netball Victoria staff and volunteers who go above and beyond to support the team, and while I'm biased, provide the best environment and home game experience of any team in the competition. <laughs> Special mention to Megan, who has hit the ground running in her first year as General Manager of Vixen's Performance and Pathways. <laughs> and it would be remiss of me not to mention the fantastic work completed by Steve Gatt over many years and wish him all the best in his new role.
to our Inner Sanctum and Melbourne Vixen members and all our fans, your enthusiasm and support of our team is appreciated and unparalleled. Finally, congratulations to all award winners tonight. Thank you. All right, thank you so much, Carol. As so much goes into it, doesn't it, Pete? It does. Into a season, into a club, there is so much. Thank you, Carol. Please stick around, though, because we have our next lot of presentations which involve what we mentioned before. We mentioned earlier that, of course, Snipple is a team game, but we have some significant milestones and six individuals notched up major individual milestones this year. Firstly, we'd like to recognise Kira Austin and Olivia Lewis for their respective 50th National League. <laughs> Come together. Kira reached the 50th game in round five. Liv joined her in round 14. Big round of applause, please. Kira Austin, Liv Lewis. Another milestone was also achieved by a defender this season. My 100th National Netball League match in round 12. It's a big round of applause for Emily Mannix. Emily, I'm going to come down here. Excuse me, Emily Mannix. I'm over here. <laughs> you are talking. Is that okay? All right, 150 games, 100 games. <laughs> Coming up. 100 games. Can you tell us what it means to play 100 games for the Vixens? I feel very lucky. Um, it's taken me a while, nine years, but I think that just shows, obviously, with minimal games in a season and a few injuries along the way and a few hiccups, I think being able to play 100, I feel very lucky and special, all at the same club as well. Um, Growing up in Victoria and Geelong, well, Drysdale, sort of a bit more quiet down there. Um, yeah, feel so honoured to be able to get picked up by the Vixens and play all of them under, you know, the guidance of Di, who had me when I was about 15, um, and then Simone taking me on board as a bit of a lanky, uncoordinated <laughs> defender. Um, you know, backed me and being able to play 100 games, I feel yeah, very lucky. Tell us about that debut game that you played uh, against Swifts. Is that right? <laughs> it was. With Alice Teague Neald, you debuted on, in the same game. What was it like when you first stepped out on court? I feel like players either debut when you're 20 goals up or 20 goals down. And we were on the 20 goals. <laughs> <laughs> and we were probably more on the 20 goals down kind of set up. <laughs> That was probably my fault, though. It was all your fault, Bianca. Um, <laughs> it was in Sydney. Uh, yeah, we were about 18 goals down at the half-time. Don't know what was going on there. Um, and Simone said, oh, Emily, get on your goalkeeper. I was like, oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> um, I came on with you, Bianca, who I'd obviously idolised for a very long time. Um, and coming on court and playing... I think we only lost by about 13, so I'm not going to say it was me the difference there, but I'm going to do something... <laughs> I want to know any advice that you might have for, you know, whether it's training partners or anyone coming through the Victorian pathway right now, what advice would you give them about, you know, whether it's to hold it, you know, tough on the pathway, you'll get there eventually, or, you know, what made you stay in it and keep wanting to fight hard to get into the Vixens? Yeah, I think for me growing up, and I say this to a lot of kids at um, clinics and that sort of thing, I was never the best player and I was probably never the one that people would look at and say, you know, she'll make it and she'll do well. I was playing C grade at footy netball when I was in the state team at 15 years old. And I was like, yeah, I'm not going to make it here. Um, but I think sticking at it, working hard, knowing that, you know, if you're not the best player out there, just, you know, continuing to work and, you know, do whatever you can to, to put your best foot forward. And I think that's what I did. I just kept knocking on the door and hung around for maybe too long and... Um, Obviously, Simone saw something in me and died and everyone at Vixens and gave me a shot. So, 
yeah, I think just sticking at it, even if you're not the, you know, the Lizzie Watson leading by 10 votes at uh, eight round eight. <laughs> Keep at it and um, you never know. <laughs> and eventually you could win the Sheryl McMahon medal. Is that what you're saying? Uh, Absolutely not, but that's oh, sure. <laughs> well, like the Vixen, so that's all that matters. <laughs> well, please congratulate our milestone oh, well today. Well done to Kira Austin, Olivia Lewis, and of course, Emetics 50 50 and 100 National League games. Another milestone we celebrate this season, present our next milestone award. We'll welcome up. One of the co-captains of the Melbourne Vixens, big round of applause for Liz Watson. <laughs> of course, we call it one of the co-captains because we know throughout the season it was our other co-captains, 150 National League matches. She bleeds Vixens' colours. She loves her team. Her team first mentality is in the forefront of her mind each and every week, which we absolutely love. We love hearing the legendary huddle web ups, not that we can't hear them. If you're anywhere within sort of three or four kilometres, you'll, <laughs> you'll, you'll hear them. But 150 National League games at the same club and now a co-captain of that wonderful club. It's a big round of applause as we celebrate Kate Maloney. As an athlete, Kate is probably one of the most professional teammates that I've been in a team with and to reach 150 games doesn't just happen overnight. She's put in so much work, uh, she's just so passionate, I think you can hear it with her loud voice out there on court, but she'll just go for everything, um, she's always trying to make the team better, she's always trying to make the environment and the, I guess, place that we come to train and play as positive as it can be um, and she's very very loyal to be at the Vixens for now 11 years and playing her 150th game is so special and I know that um, we are so proud of her and family so proud of her and she'll be you know a Vixens legend for a long time. Ever heard? Anyway, <laughs> beautiful intercept from Kate Maloney in that sense. Kate uh, will rev you up like no one else. Her quarter time and half time uh, huddle chat for second to none. Um, yeah, she just brings so much energy and um, on the court just goes for absolutely everything. Um, any loose ball is hers. And with each other, we've got this and you want to start. Hits on three. One, two, three, three. How do you not feel motivated listening to Kate Maloney though in a huddle as well? Always extremely positive, encouraging. Uh, I love playing with Kate Maloney because she has been working hard now and now she's also playing for Diamonds, so she plays for Vixens and she always encourages the girls and she works hard every time. So I love that passion from her that she, she, she wanted everyone to do the best in the team. Uh, Kate is the most hardest working person ever, so I think work ethic, um, she leads by example and you know she's always there to have a chat, brunch date, I think that's always really important too. She's always really open um, to conversations and things like that as well and you can always hear her from a mile away so she's got good communication and work ethic which is really great. <laughs> so, I dreamt of playing one game for the Melbourne Vixens. I can't believe that um, yeah I'm getting to 150. It's actually <laughs> I'm getting emotional even thinking about it but I absolutely love this club. Um, the Melbourne Vixens have looked after me so long and I couldn't think of playing a game in another dress. Uh, it's been an incredible experience. I've been so lucky to have played so many games here. Kate Maloney, you were getting very emotional watching that about yourself, weren't you? <laughs> Probably more embarrassed than <laughs> emotional, but yeah, I think when you reflect on it, I think it's probably not till the end of the year, but you know, how long I've been at the club and how many amazing people have helped me get to this position. Um, yeah, I'm just so lucky to be here. And Kate Maloney is the first player to play 150 games for the Melbourne Vixens, so that deserves another round of applause. For you, Kate, are there, has there been some standout moments that you can talk to us about? There's been so many moments along the journey and I think it's, you know, so many of them are just us at training or as Kate Eddy mentioned in that clip, going out for brunch and just, you know, we've, I've been so lucky to play with so many amazing people. I think, 
you know, of course, 2014 Premiership alongside yourself, Bianca, definitely stands out. And then going into the hub in 2020 and um, winning that Premiership was really special. Uh, I always talk about, you know, 2017 and, um, you know, round one against the Magpies and how special that was for us as well. But there's been so many... Liz, <laughs> sorry, Shani. <laughs> But I think it was just such a big turning point for our club. Um, sorry, Shans. And, yeah, I've just been supported by so many amazing people along the journey, whether that's, you know, the people at Netball Victoria, the coaches, you know, I have so much to thank to Simone and Di's been there from the start as well for taking me in and helping me to become the player and the person that I am today and also to every single one of the girls that sit here. Um, yeah, it's pretty incredible to have been a part of the Vixens for this long. And when you do talk about the Vixens as a club, what is it, do you think, that's so special about this place? You know, I always say once you come, it's really hard to leave because the environment that's created by Netball Victoria, by our Melbourne Vixens support staff, I think, you know, you guys don't realise how much you add to this group and make it such a special place for us to be around. So I thank every single one of you who are sitting on those two tables, three tables at the back there, but also our wider group from Netball Victoria as well. And it's so nice to be at the State Netball and Hockey Centre now and to have all of our offices there and to be able to see everyone on a daily basis. But, you know, I always say once you come, it's hard to leave because, you know, we've got so many amazing people and just, you know, yeah, it's an amazing club to be around. So it's really special. Game one compared to game 150. What's the difference in Kate Maloney from when she first started to now? We probably have to ask Simone that. <laughs> she might say something different to me, but... The tan's different, everybody. The tan, do we all agree? The eyebrows, the hair. Um, no, but, yeah, I think game one, I still remember going out on court in centre and it was the fastest 15 minutes of my life. Manic said they were down by 20, well we were up by 20 uh, and that was the only reason Simone probably put me on against the tactics that game and um, yeah, was lucky enough to have players like yourself and Sherelle and Jeeva and Maddie and all these players who have played for the Vixens and people I looked up to and now to be here for 150 games is pretty amazing but you know, yeah, I've been surrounded by amazing players and coaches and staff along the way. Well, here's to 150 more. Please congratulate Kate Maloney. Congratulations to Kate, 150 games. That is an absolutely fantastic achievement. We have celebrated and recognised four fantastic players for their individual milestones, both 50, 100 and 150 games throughout this season. However, we also celebrated two other 150 game milestones throughout the course of the season. Not surprisingly, because these two individuals certainly go hand in hand. So grateful to have them as part of the Mighty Vixens. They've played a huge role in the Melbourne Vixens and the culture. To present to our wonderful coaches, Let's bring up another wonderful coach and a patron of the Melbourne Vixens, Joyce Brown, OAM. Okay. Okay. Hi, Joyce. Always lovely to see your smiling face here, Joyce. And so with that, let's bring up our two amazing coaches who both brought up their 150-game milestone throughout the year. Please put your hands together for our head coach, Simone McInnes, OAM, and assistant coach, Di Honey. Yeah, 150 games, I think that just says so much about Simone as a coach. Um, the way that she goes about her business, what I love about Simone is the care that she has for every single player within our team, but she just wants to get the best out of you. And I think she's done an amazing job of doing that over the past, I think it's her 11th season now. Um, you know, to be at one club for so long is an absolutely incredible achievement. And I think, yeah, Simone just represents what the Melbourne Vixens are about. Di Honey is someone that I love having in the Vixens. She actually coached me back when I was about 15, 16 uh, at Geelong Grammar in Bell Park playing local footy netball. And 
To have her part of the Vixens just adds that real nice balance with Simone. They're very different in the way that they approach the game and coaching, but she really balances everything out and has a lot of wise words to share, not just with the middies, but the rest of the court as well. Yeah, I think Simone's a really um, holistic person. I've felt so safe and accepted um, coming down here and it's been quite nice to have a bit of a fresh um, coaching style. She's really passionate about who you are as a player and, and what you want to achieve. Um, obviously each individual player has their own goals and she's really focused to make sure you achieve that, not just for yourself but for the team as well. Di is one of the best midcourt coaches for us and for this group and I've been lucky enough to be um, coached under her my whole time here at the Vixens but she doesn't take it too seriously as well but she'll tell you how it is. She wants to get you to be the best athlete that you can especially in that midcourt. Um, she's obviously a great player herself and has a lot of insight into the game um, but I think she just has a really nice balance with the attacking end in general. Um, she knows how to communicate, how to get us to be the best that we can, but also just bring that fun, um, silly, I guess, energy off the court that we all kind of roll our eyes out, but know that she's just there to make the club as best it can be. Um, I like um, coach by Simone because uh, she's one of the best coaches um, in the world and also she look after everyone. Um, she wants everyone to be the best. Um, she cares about people and she's the best. I think Di is quite light-hearted, but she can have a, um, a serious conversation as well. And I think that's when you know that if Di comes up to you and says something, it's real and it's quite legit. Um, she is so much fun to be around and I think she just empowers everyone to work really hard and she just puts so much belief into all of our skills as well, which is really important to have. Over. <laughs> you can stay up here, Joyce. I'm just going to have a quick chat. Firstly, we're going to start with you. No, I'm starting with you first. Look at you, ordering me around still. <laughs> Tell me about, obviously 150 games is a lot to be at one club, but a lot to also work alongside your bestie and Simone McInnes. The two of you have come as a combination and you've worked really well together. What is it about the combination that works? Mm. Um, it's, no, I didn't, no, I didn't mean it like that. Uh, it's like um, we're probably yin and yang. But I'm, I don't know what that means, but I'm the nice one and she's probably, I'm, 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 I'm the good cop, she's the bad cop, which she has to be, she's her coach, but we just get on so well and we've known each other for so long and we're just two peas in a pod and we don't take our, like, ourselves seriously, we have, a, we have fun, we have, we have fun. And the standout, I know you have fun, don't you worry. <laughs> now the standout moments for you over the 150 games with the club. Wait, that's a long time. It is a long time, but surely there's some moments that really do stand Obviously, out. See, 2014 when you were in the team, Bianca, the Premiership. Also, 2020. I'll say, like Melanie said, because that was a hard year in the half for everyone. And I will even say, I loved the Giants game prelim to make the grand final last year. That was unreal. Yeah, yeah. prelim final, win by one. Yeah. Doesn't get much better than that. All right, I'm just going to move over this side to Simone. Simone, for you, I'll ask you actually the same question. Why does it work so well with Di, the two of you working together, game in, now. week in, week out? Um, I have absolute trust in Di. I have absolute faith and trust that she'll tell me what I need to hear, is, can be honest with and open with me and will be honest and open with the girls. And we have a laugh. We do have a laugh. We've got history... <laughs> We've been through good, we've been bad as coaches and as players um, and that goes a long way. And what's your favourite part about being coach of this club? Oh, my favourite part is the people, my favourite part is the players and to see, I just feel so privileged in the players that come through. Bianca, I look at you and like, uh, like I started, I coached you and to see, to have an important um, involvement in players' lives 
on court, off court, that, that's my greatest reward and I feel very privileged. And what about the current playing group that you have here in front of you? This season especially, it didn't necessarily go to plan, but what is it about this group that is really special that you know is something that could build for the future? Oh, I, know, I know they hurt, I know they want more, and I know they're going to give more to next year and that a premiership is what we all want and we will give our everything to give and that Joyce wants. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I've coached you all, remember. Yes. <laughs> no, it is. And, and it is. You it know, is I do. I stand here with Joyce and I, I privilege. I had Joyce coach me. Um, you know, in, in the Australian team and you guys have had her with, um, in, in Phoenix and she teaches us that. It's like you care and you work and you pull and you drive each other for the best and that is you want to win premierships together no matter what and you'll do it hard, you'll do it how, whatever it takes, isn't it, Joyce? You'll get there and you'll find that extra that you need and we hurt from this year, there is no doubt about that. We do. I've hardly got out of bed for two weeks, Joyce. <laughs> Joyce phoned me to give her a call back. I'm, a, I'm not ready for that call yet, Joyce. But honestly, that was going to be a comforting I know, call. I know, but I wasn't even ready for that. But, <laughs> but you know what? But that's what we do. We give everything we've got to it. And like as Vixens, as Victorians, we give our everything. And we don't always get there. But you've got to go and you go again. And I'll, we'll give everything we've got to the next time. And Joyce will be there with us and we'll go. And we want everyone with us. We will get there. We will. Right. We, will we, are we, are. we are women. Well, please put your hands together for Di Honey, Simone McInnes and the great Joyce Brown. Wonderful to have the Melbourne Vixens patron, Joyce Brown OEM, joining us. One more round of applause, please, for our wonderful coaching staff right here. Simone McInnes OEM and, of course, Guy Honey. So we have recognised some wonderful individuals throughout the course of this evening. And now, of course, it comes down to our final awards. It's time to get back to the vote count. We are almost at the pointy end of the season. Just taking a look back, a bit of a recap of that leaderboard. We remember that Liz Watson is currently leading on 30 votes, MJ nine votes behind. Who is going to be crowned the 2023 Sherelle McMahon medalist? On that note, for the first time this evening to welcome up on the stage, the medal is named after her, so it's probably fair that we get her to read the next couple of votes. A big round of applause for Sherelle McMahon. You're not talking to me, Shaz. You can read the votes. But after, before you do that, let's take a look at rounds 9 through 11. Our first win on the road came in dramatic fashion as we headed north to take on the Lightning. A defensive masterclass from Emily Mannix and an after-the-siren super shot from Kira Austin for the second straight week delivered a one-goal win. Mannix set the tone early claiming two of her five intercepts in the first term to set up a remarkable 17-6 quarter. MJ Kawinda was rock solid up front, fed with precision by both Liz Watson and Kate Maloney. Steph Wood sank four consecutive super shots in the last quarter to give her side the lead for the first time. But Austin repeated her heroics to give us another one goal win. Here Austin! Round 10 was BCNA round and another 7,000 plus crowd headed to JCA to witness a brilliant full court performance from their side. Down by three at quarter time, we came out firing and registered a 19 to eight second term and pushed on from there, winning each of the final three quarters. Over the top of the mess. Kira Austin was in blistering form, shouldering more of the shooting load, registering two intercepts and two deflections. 
Emily Mannix put out yet another masterclass in defence, shutting the ladder leader's attack end down with an astounding eight intercepts and six deflections. Mannix, here she goes again! Another massive performance from Liz Watson in the centre, with 43 feeds and three deflections, saw us push out and claim a 21-goal win. The Sergeant McInnes Cup and second position on the ladder were on the line in round 11, the first of our two First Nations round matches, and over 8,000 fans came out to cheer us on at John Kane Arena. Jo Weston stood up in her battle with an inform Helen Housby, claiming two intercepts and two deflections, whilst Hannah Mundy and Liz Watson shared the feeding load. The, one that injects herself into the... the Swifts capitalised on the super shot period in each term, building their lead out to as much as 20 before we stepped our pressure and work rate back up and brought it back to eight goals. But it was too little, too late. Round nine, Kate Eddy, one vote. Maui Kamwenda, three votes. Liz Watson, three votes. Joe Weston, three votes. Emily Mannix, eight votes. <laughs> Round 10, Kira Austin, one vote. Kate Maloney, one vote. Hannah Mundy, one vote. Liz Watson, six votes. Emily Mannix, nine votes. <laughs> Round 11, Kira Austin, one vote. Olivia Lewis, two votes. Hannah Mundy, two votes. Joe Weston, two votes. Liz Watson, three votes. Kate Maloney, eight votes. Now let's take a look at the highlights from rounds 12 to 14. Round 12 was another seesawing affair as we took on the Firebirds in Brisbane. Neither side could stamp any authority on the match in the first half. The battle through the midcourt forcing turnovers in both directions. Hannah Mundy was on fire. Oh, how good was that? with 46 feeds, an intercept and three deflections to her name, combining well with Liz Watson through the middle. Kira Austin stepped up her shooting load and got hands to a few deflections as well, whilst Kate Maloney put in a workhorse effort against her former teammate, Lara Dunkley, to slow the feeds to Danelle Wallam. M Mannix notched up her 100th match, but we couldn't get it done to celebrate the milestone, going down by five goals. The King's birthday long weekend saw one of Netball's fierce rivalries come to an end as we face the Collingwood Magpies for the very last time. The Crosstown Derby brought in over 9,000 fans to John Kane Arena to witness a battle for the ages. The Pies came out firing, holding the lead for the first half despite another clinical defensive effort from Emily Mannix and Joe Weston. Hannah Mundy proved a game changer once again, bringing pace and strength to Circle Edge in the second half, and Kate Maloney worked relentlessly to disrupt the Pies feeders. Kira Austin was outstanding in attack, returning from a heavy knock to help push the lead out to nine goals at the final whistle, as we claimed a crucial win in the race to finals. The final home and away round saw us head to Sydney to take on the Giants. Emily Mannix and Joe Weston combined to create plenty of turnover ball early, forced the Giants goalers to shoot from range. Liz Watson stood strong through the middle, linking well with Kate Maloney, and consistently finding her goalers with precision feeds. Gets it away. That was a huge play. Liv Lewis came on to mark her 50th National League game, whilst Kate Eddy caused havoc showcasing her versatility between goal defence and wing defence. Despite some quick ball movement and full court defensive pressure, we couldn't hold off the fast finishing Giants who converted their opportunities and claimed a three goal win. Bring the house down, she nails it! Round 12, Kira Austin, three votes. Kate Maloney, three votes. Liz Watson, three votes. Emily Mannix, four votes. Hannah Mundy, five votes. 
Round 13, Hannah Mundy, one vote. Emily Mannix, two votes. Kira Austin, seven votes. Liz Watson, eight votes. <laughs> Round 14, Kate Eddy, two votes. Maui Kamwenda, two votes. Kate Maloney, two votes. Emily Mannix, three votes. Liz Watson, nine votes. Thank you, Sherelle. Please stay by and you can assist with our presentations. That brings us to the end of the vote count for season 2023 and it's now time to announce our Sherelle McMahon medalist and our runner-up. Gives me great pleasure to announce the 2023 Melbourne Vixens Most Valuable Player runner-up, taking home a $250 prize from HCF. On 41 votes is Emily Mannix. <laughs> The Melbourne Vixens most valuable player runner-up, Emily Maddox. Just pay attention for one moment. What an amazing season, a really consistent season. You've been up here before. You were the, you have been a Sean McMahon medalist in the past and now a runner-up. It's an amazing year. How did you find your season from a, a personal level? I was definitely not expecting to be up here. I thought the only award we were going to be winning was the Podcast of the Year Award, me and Joe. <laughs> Backstoppers, anyone? I stole Joe's line on that. Um, no, but uh, obviously, at the end of the day, I would have loved to play in last night's game. I think I actually didn't watch much of it. I went out with mum and dad and Ari for dinner and ca caught the last five minutes. Um, so, at the end of the day, that was the goal. But for me personally, I think it was probably a little bit up and down. I think... Um, you know, starting off okay, a bit down, up, all over the place. Um, but I thought Liv and I, credit to Liv, playing, you know, roles in goalkeeper and being able to come on at different times, you know, it's not easy. But I thought Liv, you know, is an asset to the Vixens and for us to be able to play that together and come on and, and play a role and um, influence, you know, she's got the hops, I can't jump, I'm old. <laughs> more of um, just a bit there if you need and you know I think we offer something different and to be able to do that together in that goalkeeper role I thought was a credit you know to the Vixens and us as a team but defensively I thought we did a really good job um, as a team as well you saw Kipper getting intercepts all over the court um, and I think that that was something that was really good for us this year. So what does it mean to you to be recognised in a different way? When you won the Sherelle McMahon medal, you played almost every minute of the season in the one position. You've had to be a lot more flexible now. You talk of Liv coming in and Joe, of course, Kate, helping you out as well. You've got a very strong team-first mentality. How important is that for you at this stage of career, celebrating 100 games as we did throughout the, the year? What does that mean for you to be recognised in that way and be up here as the runner-up? Yeah, I think Katie said it before that, you know, this year we really all played different roles. You know, we're coming on at different positions. I was playing goal defence, which I never thought I probably could run out um, that. But as Bianca did later on in age, she come into goal defence and did all right with those old legs. So I thought, you know, I'll give it a crack. <laughs> um, and, you know, I love that position playing, you know, obviously Joey offers that real tenacity out there in goal defence and will just give everything for a team and wears her heart on her sleeve in goal defence. And, um, we play probably different positions as in, in that goal defence role. And I think as a defensive unit, you know, we saw Keddie in goal defence. We saw 
Um, you know, Maloney coming into wing defence as well, I thought the, the versatility that we had as a team was really strong. And, um, you know, MJ, I'd like to see you out at centre one day, mate. <laughs> Maybe in the future, do you reckon? Or not? She'd get contact every second centre fast, so I reckon she'd a couple of these. <laughs> but yeah, I think that was a real asset that we could all play different positions and offer something different at different times when we needed it. I think, I reckon I'm going to ask you two or three questions if you managed to talk about every other player in your team, which is a credit to you, of course. But we're up, we're up here because you're the MVP runner-up and only three, the two coaches and Megan all do all the votes at the end of each round. And after 14 rounds, you've been voted the second most valuable player to the Melbourne Vixens in a final series year. That's a pretty big achievement. How does that make you feel, knowing that you're getting the recognition, obviously, from your teammates, but also from the coaches and the people that, that genuinely matter? I was going to make another joke. I should probably stop joking and be serious for once. I was going to say, Megan probably gave me... We we're wearing the same outfit today, so she's obviously got something after me. We, um, we did the votes before tonight, though, so just so you're aware. That's why the, the trophy's engraved. <laughs> no, I think for me, like I said before, I was a bit up and down, um, but I think probably in goalkeeper you, you do get a little... You know, oh, I'm just going to talk about my teammates again. All the hard work at the front gets you the intercepts at the back, which is true. That's not... A, that's not that's not false. That's true. I can say that. <laughs> they make me look good. Sometimes when you play goalkeeper, it's all the hard work at the front, and then you can come out for a specky and look amazing. So, oh yeah, everyone. Yeah, everyone looks at defenders and think that job's really easy, especially when you're playing on. I mean, you're playing on some of the world's best shooters every week. There's no, there's no let up. Every week you are coming up against some of the best in the world. Do you have sleepless nights during the week? Do you, how do you prepare for the, the different styles? Because they're all different as well and they're always, always evolving and finding new ways. Yeah, and I think that was probably something for me this year was, you know, not trying to compare myself. And I said this to Simone and Di in my exit meeting, um, probably a bit premature. You should have had that next week, our exit meetings. But anyway, had them a couple of weeks ago because we lost the final. No one knows. <laughs> but, um, you know, I said for me this year it was more feeling confident in who I am as a player and not comparing myself to others. And I know there's a lot of great goalkeepers out there, past and present, that have played the game. And I've probably compared myself to them a little bit and I'm probably a little bit different. I mean, we look at a Shardy Layden who's sitting in front of me, polar opposites, me and her. And she's come on as a defensive specialist coach for us this year and added a real flair and energy to our defence end in our team. So we play the game very differently. She played, a, you know, that voice just beckons through every single room that she's in but I think for me being confident if, with you know who I am as a player and just you know going out there and owning it and, and not you know trying to be something that I'm not and as a person I feel like I'm good at that I'm just a bit of an idiot um and go <laughs> idiot can you say idiot probably not okay I'll say idiot <laughs> a bit of an idiot um which is probably comes from my upbringing and you know my family is everyone <laughs> sorry that sounded oh, really you're... Oh, you're... You must be so proud. <laughs> Is there anyone else you'd like to thank? Has anyone not copped a spray from M tonight? I mean, admittedly, it wasn't, it wasn't your finest moment. So I'll, I'll just really simply. I know, but it did. When I asked you to thank people the other time that were being on stage, it was one of some of the greatest 30 seconds and your little nicknames for people were great too. Thinking of how great the people around you have been, I can't stretch this out much longer. Is there anyone that you'd like to thank? Um, yeah. <laughs> we'll start with... <laughs> shut up. We'll start with the team, obviously. Um, you know, like I said before, they make me look good, especially back in that goalkeeper role. I love this year. I thought, you know, our energy off the court um, is unreal and we've got some different personalities. We all somehow combine together... Um, you know, Kim coming on board after Rani, Ms. Rani, a really challenging year for Rans um, and putting that position obviously early on. And, you know, credit to Rans for the work that she did behind the scenes. <laughs> Clap Rans because she hasn't been <laughs> really hard for Rani, um, you know, getting that position to come in and, and I've unfortunately get taken away from her so early. But then, you know, someone like Kim coming on board and, you know, just saying yes and having a crack and I think that's you know to Kim wanting to do that but also knowing that she's coming on to a team or into a team that's very well respected and I'm not going to speak on behalf of Kim here but I'm not sure if that would have been the case for every other team so the fact that she did that put her life on hold came in helped us out you know that's you know speaks to, to Kim um, as, a, as a great person so well done Kim 
Um, and every, of all the other girls have seen you for so many years, you don't need to be thanked. <laughs> Kate and Liz, you've bloody been around for too long. <laughs> Known you for too long. Um, all the support staff, so our immediate support staff that we see on a day-to-day -day basis, you know, the couple that we see, Kim and Emma, that got acknowledged today, the amount of work that they do, but then our Dave, Dave hasn't been thanked today, and he's been sitting there. <laughs> Dave is, is very much loved by everyone, but when pre-season comes around and he makes us run nine 500 metres, nine 500 metres. How many metres is that in total? Too bloody many, I reckon. <laughs> <laughs> I play goalkeeper, Dave. I've told you this. I don't need to run that far, but anyway. It started out really nicely, Dave. You got some, you got some positivity at the start and after about two sentences, that was it. Uh, are, are there four people around who haven't been mentioned tonight? Is there anyone? No? Pretty much there. Uh, you, so let's go to the people that you'd like to thank on your behalf. What does that mean? Who would you... We've got to be out of here in an hour. Thank you to everyone that has helped me this year. The last couple of years have been rough, injuries and everything, but the people that have stuck around, the Vixens is a family and we all do, um, you know, so much. But the staff, uh, you know, we love to work with you guys. We love going on those away trips. Um, you're amazing. My family, I've got three siblings. Um... They're all right, and my mum and dad that are here today, um, the idiots, obviously. <laughs> They're not idiots. And then um, my partner, Ari, who's here. Little Ari. <laughs> Little Ari. <laughs> he knows who he is. That's... He does. He's sitting at the front. Um, but, yeah, thank you to everyone. This does mean a lot because I definitely was not expecting it. Um, but, yeah, thanks to everyone that's played a part in my journey up to here. Emily Mannix, our Melbourne Vixens MVP runner-up. Now is the moment that we have all been waiting for. The Sherelle McMahon medalist for season 2023, who will take home a trophy, a beautiful Sherelle McMahon medalist necklace and a $500 prize from Cafe. The winner of our 2023 Sherelle McMahon medal is Liz Watson. <laughs> Watson. Oh, straight over the top. How's the vision? Vixens by one. Watson. Bullet pass. And Watson gets an easy one into Corwin. Housing allows Watson to come through. Long. Watson finds Austin. Sherelle McMahon medalist. Just before we hear from our winner, let's take a look at the final leaderboard. Hannah Mundy with 11 votes, Kate Eddy with 18, Liv Lewis 21, Kate Maloney and Joe Weston with 22, MJ Kwenda with 26, Kira Austin 29, our runner up, Emily Mannix 41, but a clear winner with 62 <laughs> votes, Liz Watson. <laughs> Would you come forward? Yes. Yeah. This, for those who don't know, although I'm sure you all know, this is a new record, the most of any Vixen in the history of the club. Fourth Sherelle McMahon medal for Liz Watson. That's an amazing effort. Amazing. Come on, come forward, come on. Danka, come up, okay. let's have a chat because we've never had a four-time winner from a, a Vixen's point of view. What does it feel like at the moment, Liz, coming here tonight, knowing that it was a, a celebration, but also knowing that as has been mentioned, we didn't obviously get the, the ultimate prize, but great recognition of another wonderful individual season. Thank you. Um, it, it is really special. I mean, um, 
like we've heard tonight, this is a pretty amazing club to be a part of. The, the players, the staff, it is really special. And to receive it off Sherelle, who has her own statue now, is also <laughs> very, very nice to know that, you know, I'm playing in, in a club that Sherelle is a legend at. Um, so, and Bianca too, you're a legend at <laughs> club too. But um, <laughs> it is really, really special. Well, I want to talk to you, Liz, about the season in particular. For you, what have been the highlights? I think um, probably getting to finals for us, it was a bit of a, a, you know, we had some great games, some really inconsistent games like we've heard earlier, but I think like Em said with Kim coming on and just everyone saying yes, having a go and, and getting to the finals and I think um, we've had so many close games this season. Um, I love and hate the super shot at different times throughout <laughs> the season, but I think we were there and thereabouts for most games and to get to the finals and then um, fall short in the end, I think that was probably a... Obviously disappointing, but a really proud moment for us to, to make it. And talk to us actually about those close games, because as a player, well, actually, you tell us, as a player, do you love being in those moments where the pressure is on, where you might need someone to nail a super shot for you? Like, do you thrive on those moments? Um, oh, look, I, I love it out there, but I think it's more for the shooters. They probably hate it when we're looking at each other, like, do we go for a one, do we go for a two? And we're like, oh, I don't know, you, you're the one shooting it, you decide. So, you know, that was a big learning for us. And actually, you know, what are we doing in these big moments? Do we go for those ones and those twos? And it was a bit of a mind battle in the end. But um, I think playing in front of big crowds, having that awesome atmosphere, um, I feel like every game this season was close and tight. There were a few blowouts there, we, we don't talk about those. But... All of our games are really, really close, and I think, um, yeah, it, it just makes it difficult out there. Well, you, you talk about playing at home, and we know that's such an advantage for you guys. Members, fans, everyone that comes to John Kane Arena for your home games it is an incredible advantage to you guys as a team. And what is it about playing there that you love so much, and how powerful is it when the crowd is so loud and behind you in those tight games? Yeah, we, we do love it. I think... Um you know, to look at the, the support that we get in, in front of that, you know, that big stadium, uh, really, really awesome to play at, the amazing fans and, and the big, you know, roar that we get when we run out there. It is really nice. And you go around to other states, obviously, and play around there. And um, I think to come home, we always, we, we performed really well at home this year <laughs> compared to away. So it definitely shows that we love that crowd and that energy that they bring. All right, so it's Vixen season. But there's also the World Cup coming up. You're captain of the Diamonds. How do you manage that when you're in season in Super Netball and obviously your Aussie Diamonds teammates, you're playing against them, some are in the team. How do you manage that? Because it is quite a juggle, I'd imagine. Uh, yeah, they're really great at kind of just leaving us alone once we get into our, our clubs. And I know that our coach talks uh, with the Aussie coach often and there is that communication. But... We do meet regularly on Zoom, we did throughout this season to connect as a diamond squad, but um, you know, you've got to be performing really well with your club to carry that momentum into a World Cup, to be selected for a World Cup as well. Um, but yeah, that all starts tomorrow for us. We head into camp here in Melbourne um, before we head away. So um, yeah, it'll be a bit of a whirlwind. What are you looking forward to most when you get over there to Cape Town? Obviously, winning, winning that gold medal is obviously the plan. But, um, yeah, I think we experienced Cape Town earlier this year, uh, so very familiar where we're going to. But I think just playing for your country, nothing beats that. Um, it's very, very special to have my family there supporting as well. It's going to be really nice and um, hopefully have a really successful campaign. Well, Liz, do you want to say thank you to anybody? <laughs> oh, of course. Um, can't thank you, Emily. You didn't thank me, so sorry. Just <laughs> 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 get that out there now. <laughs> but I think we've heard so much tonight about how amazing this club is and um, it's all the players, it's all the staff. <laughs> it's Simone and Di for 10 years. I can't believe it's been 10 years and, and here we are now. But so many amazing people have come on board into this club. Kim um, as, as well coming in this year. Uh, Caitlin and Shani. There's so many awesome faces and, and great leaders who've been around this club and obviously all the girls make it that special moment because they're the ones that we do the daily grind with every single day which is very very special a big shout out to joyce as well um joyce comes into training quite often and, and always gives us a really honest great <laughs> <laughs> great uh speech which we love because she is obviously a legend of our sport and very well respected so thank you so much for everything you've done for us joyce um, Netball Victoria and the VIS, um, we're going to miss you, Bill, so much. So thank you again for everything you've done for us. 
but it is an awesome organisation to be a part of and to have the support from the VIS as well makes it really special. And then of course my family, my mum and my dad and my uncle are over there tonight. They have been to so many netball games, so <laughs> thank you for always being there. Yeah, big clap to them. <laughs> um, you know, most, pretty much every home game, a few interstate games, not that many this year, I didn't forget about that, but I used to get to a few <laughs> interstate games, but to be there all the time um, and just, you know, the wins, the losses, they're always there. And then obviously Hamish as well, who <laughs> has watched so much Neville that he probably was not expecting to be watching, but um, I know that you know, you get your, your break now from netball, so thank you for everything you've done <laughs> for me and for, you know, my career. It's really nice to come home and know that I've got your support all the time, so thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you, Liz. There's also a trophy that you get to um, just have for a little bit. Hold that up. Because whilst you're here, if you are able, ladies and gentlemen, if you could please be upstanding and raise your glasses and if... Amy, she might be on Passover duty here. I know we have the... Ah, we've got a waiter. I thought your job was never done, but it was on this occasion. Yep, now get the four-time medalist to hand one to me. That seems <laughs> It's an amazing achievement to win one Sherwood McMahon medal, but to now be a four-time Sherwood McMahon medalist with the greatest club in the country is a fantastic effort. A big round of applause as we toast the winner to Liz Watson. To Liz Watson. <laughs> Make sure you warn the winner about Sparkle. Well done, you. Good luck. Oh, One more round of applause, please, for our Sherelle McMahon medalist, Liz Watson. Thank you to Sherelle McMahon as well. Thank you, Sherelle. Statue moves. All right, that now concludes the formalities for this evening. I would like to thank everyone for joining us here tonight, as well as those who have joined us at home. Thank you very much for tuning in. Pete, it's been an absolute pleasure to have joined you up here as well for an amazing night. I also want to say a big thank you to you. All your work that you do, Pete, at the game, all the work that you do for the club, you have been involved since day one with this club. Give Pete, please, a round of applause for all his years of work. You are the voice for all the Vixen supporters, and I think it's a pretty special role that you get to play week in, week out. So congratulations for what you've done this season too and for all the years of your service. Yeah, you don't need to remind me how long it's been. Um, it's only been absolutely sensational. What a great club to be a part of. I think everyone, whether you're a, a partner, a sponsor, or of course, family, friends, if you're a supporter, our inner sanctum members who are so important, everyone who's been involved with this magnificent club knows just how great is our volunteer table, of course. Thank you, Remy. Well done, Remy. Remy, you had the microphone in 10 minutes on stage. That was your time. Yeah, no, this will be quite a quiet night. Um, and to Bianca Chatfield, to come along after everything this week and yesterday, what a great effort that was. That's a very, very big day and night. How good is it having Bianca right here? Great to have you still part of this magnificent club. We are, of course, still in the room for a little bit longer. Thank you very much, as Bianca said, to everyone joining us online. Most importantly, thanks to our wonderful players, their partners, their, their families, and for all the sacrifices that you make. It makes it so important that you're here and great to celebrate a huge night. Thank you so much to everyone. It's been great to have you here. Have a wonderful night and we'll do it all again next year. Thank you. ...are also sourced from Kenya, Honduras, Ethiopia and Brazil, then roasted in Melbourne. Just another reason it's coffee fit for an Aussie.